Welcome again at the E2E paint job. It's time for another carbon work video. Here I have an Obia from one of my clients. He had a little damage on the chain stays. He wants to mount also an E-tap, so I have to close some holes. That's what I will do in this video. You can follow me if you want to know how to do that. So let's start with the carbon work. Before we can work on the frame, we have to talk a little bit about theory and how carbon fiber frames are made. Most of you know the woven carbon fiber, the 3K, and if you look close in the bottom bracket, you can see such a woven carbon fiber, and that's the most common material everybody of you knows as carbon. But most modern carbon frames are also made of unidirectional carbon fibers, and that means they are non-woven, and all the carbon strings go in one direction, and if you look close in this area, you can see such a carbon layer and all the strings go in one direction. And if you look close in this area, you can see another layer and all the strings are directed in another direction. So we have a cross layup. And if you look close in the middle of the damage, you can see another layer of such unidirectional carbon strings and they go in this direction. So we have a triple layup the cross layup and the triple underneath. And I know that there's also woven carbon fiber inside the frame, but it's not damaged. And I like to show you what unidirectional carbon fibers mean. I have such a role of unidirectional carbon fiber. It looks woven, but it isn't. The main carbon strings, the long carbon strings, go only in one direction. Here you can see the main strings, the bigger ones. And the woving is only to hold all these strings in place to produce such a roll. If I don't have the woving, I have only thousands of these strings and they can't hold together in such a roll. Here you can see the small woving. And the main strings go only in one direction and that's the material we need to repair the frame because we want to imitate the original layup, the cross layup and also the layup underneath. And that's what we do during the repair process of the damage. The first little step we have to do is we have to remove some color around the areas where we will do the carbon work. I will use power tools. If you don't have power tools, no problem. You can do it also by hand. But before we start, I have to talk about safety issues and safety gear, because if you don't want to be an idiot like I am, I highly recommend to wear safety gear. I like to tell you a little story and I like to show you a picture of my eyeball. It was one year ago and I got metal in my eyes and had to go to hospital. And as I were in hospital, the doctor came to me with such a needle and he said, don't sneeze. I will pick out the metal out of your eye. And I got scared as hell. And the only thing I hoped that he don't have to sneeze and that he don't pick my eyeball and it said, oops, an eyeball. And if you don't want to happen that to your eyes and if you don't want to wear an eye patch for more than a week or a month or longer, I highly recommend to wear safety gear. The minimum are some safety glasses and also a respirator or a mask when sanding carbon frames because the dust is toxic. So a mask is a minimum. And if you want, you can wear also some Mickey Mouse ears when working with power tools because they are very loud and it's a good idea to have such Mickey Mouse ears. And what I will use is an orbital sander. Be aware that the orbital sander can ruin your frame easily if you are not familiar in using such power tools. And the second power tool I use is really a beast. I will use a pneumatic band grinder and the band grinder can eat your frames in seconds. Check this. So make sure that you are a professional or that you know what you're doing when using such power tools because they have really power. And it's very simple. The only thing we have to do is we have to remove the color. Be careful when doing that. And if you don't want to use power tools or if you don't have power tools, you can sand your frame by hand. I use such sandpaper. It's dry sandpaper. And Use such a strip of sandpaper, fold it in half, so you have grip on both sides, grip on your hand and also grip on the frame. And then just sand these areas by hand. And 
and make sure that the dust don't turn uh, gray or dark gray because you sand the carbon fiber and that's what you don't want. So make sure your dust is light colored. And if you have a dark colored frame, be very careful when you sand these areas and the carbon fiber. I like to remove also the hole for the derailleur cable and it's not an even surface. The cable guide sticks out of the frame. So I have to grind this area with my band grinder and I like to show you how easy this band grinder can eat carbon frames. And there's also a little metal rivet inside and I have to remove also this rivet. I like to close also the 8mm holes for the derailleur cables and I will use an 8mm carbon rod to do that. But I have one problem, there's still color inside these holes. And for a perfect glue, I have to remove the color. And to do so, I will use an eight millimeter drill bit and a drill and drill these holes again to remove the color inside these holes. Now I have a raw carbon surface and the carbon glue sticks perfect to the frame and also to the carbon rod. The first thing I like to do is I like to do some patches from inside to close these two holes. And that's very simple. I have prepared some of these patches and I like to show you how you can produce such patches. What you need is some masking tape, also such a roll of carbon fiber and these are my patches, but there's still no resin on and I have to add some more layers. I have to cross the layers in a 90 degree angle. That's what I told you before. We have to do different layups for a strength in between the carbon fibers. But at first I have to mix the resin and I will use a fast resin. And the ratio of this resin is one to one. And it's very fast. I have only 10 minutes working time delay before it hardens. And come a bit closer and I like to show you how I did the patches. These are the two patches and the masking tape helps to stick the patches inside the frame until the resin cures. And I have some more layers and I have to glue these layers to my patches in a 90 degree angle. And at first I have to apply some resin. And then the next layer of carbon fiber in a 90 degree angle. That's wrong. It's a bit tricky and you have some sticky masking tape, but it's possible. And I will do also a third layer. Again in a 90 degree angle.
I have to add some more resin as the glue in between the patch and the carbon frame. And then I will use such a wooden stick to stick the patch inside the frame. The patches are inside the frame, but now we need some pressure inside these tubes, these carbon tubes, which helps to glue the patches onto the tube. And I have a little trick for you. You can use such an old bicycle tube, put it into your carbon frame. Inflate the tube and you have pressure which helps to glue your patches inside your frame. And we have perfect pressure inside the frame. Now it needs to dry. I will put it in the oven for one hour. If you don't have an oven, no problem. Wait a day, 20 hours is enough. Or if you use such a fast epoxy, you need to wait maybe half an hour or maybe an hour. That's also enough. And then we can do the rest of the carbon repair. The resin has cured, so we can remove the bicycle tube. And the next step will be to close the holes with the carbon rod. You have seen how I glued in the pieces of carbon rod and it looks really good. I sanded this area and now I have flat surface filled with carbon. And what I have to do now is I have to repair the area on the chain stays and I have to fill also this gap with carbon fiber and that's what I have to do now.
And I prepared some carbon fiber and I will glue it on. At first I have to add some epoxy on in this area. And I cut some pieces of this unidirectional carbon fiber which fit this area and we will do the cross layup as I mentioned before. The first layer has this direction and the next layer will have a cross direction. So I can produce such a crossed carbon fiber layup. And it's no magic. Add some resin in between the layers of carbon fiber. Not too much. You will squeeze it later with some shrinking tape. And that's the cross layer. And I will apply also a third layer on top. And now I can use such a shrinking tape and it's a special tape. There are hundreds of little holes, little dots inside this tape. And when you apply heat, it shrinks. And so you can squeeze the resin in between these fibers. And if you have applied too much resin, you can squeeze it out of the carbon fiber and Normally you will do that with a vacuum pump, but if you are a small workshop or if you do it DIY, it's simple and easy to use such a shrinking tape. I have to apply some of these stripes. And now I can apply some heat and the shrinking tape shrinks and you can see that the resin squeezes out of these holes and the shrinking tape does the pressure a vacuum pump would do. The resin has cured so let's check what we have. And that's what I have. It took a bit longer to remove all the masking tape and I have some wrinkles in the resin which lays on top of the carbon fiber, but that's not a problem. I can sand this area and when I've done the sanding, 
I can apply a new paint job on this frame. And that's it. The chainstay is fixed. All the holes for the derailleur cables are filled with carbon and the frame is ready for a paint job, but that's another story. And as you have seen, it's very simple to do such a minor carbon repair even at home. So good luck if you want to do such a carbon repair. And if you're interested in bike stuff, bike painting and all these things, check also my Insta and Facebook for my daily stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in one of my next videos. Goodbye.